Hey there friends and welcome back to Strange Rebel Gaming. I'm Brianna White and today a very special fun piece of content. This is another panel from SRGCon 2022. We had the awesome opportunity of speaking with Susie Young, the voice of Yuffie in Final Fantasy VII Remake, and Max Middleman, the voice of Red 13 in Final Fantasy VII Remake. I was so excited to do this because I've been wanting to work with Susie for a really, really long time um, after we met at the Final Fantasy VII Remake World Orchestra Tour, and I was so glad that Max was able to join us too um, because we hadn't been in touch as much but I'm really, really excited to get to know him a little bit better. And I think we definitely accomplished that with this panel. We talk about our roles and our characters, of course, and how much we love the Final Fantasy fandom, but we also talk about who they are as people and what they would have done if they weren't voice acting, which honestly, some of the answers just shocked and surprised me and it was super fun to talk about, to discuss. So I hope you like it too. Are you enjoying this new kind of content, this SRGCon content? I hope so. And um, if you weren't able to join us for SRGCon 2022 for whatever reason, I hope you enjoy this content uh, watching it back now. But if you do like this content and you want to see more of it, you can always look into joining us for SRGCon 2020 whatever is next. <laughs> and you can join uh, Strange Rebel Gaming's Patreon community for more information on that and the link is in the description if you're interested. So without any further ado, please enjoy this panel. I am so excited to introduce our special guests for this panel. Would it even be SRGCon without Final Fantasy VII Remake voice actors? I don't think that it would. Today we have Max Middleman joining us. You may have heard Max in your Lion April as Kosei, in Seven Deadly Sins as King. Uh, he also voices Saitama in One Punch Man. Did I say that correctly? Sa Saitama, close, Saitama. close enough. Okay, yeah. awesome. And then also voices Ryuji in Persona 5. And most recently, everyone is all up in arms about Arataki Ito in Genshin Impact. Ah, yes. <laughs> yeah, everyone's real excited about that one. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> Welcome in. Thanks for being Thank here. You. I appreciate Thank your you time. Me. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. And then, of course, voices Red 13 in Final Fantasy VII Remake. Who? I know. Who is that? Who? Some, some lab rat dog. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> also with us is the wonderful Susie Young. And did I say your voice right or your name right? Uh, uh, Susie Young. But yeah. Susie Young. Okay, <laughs> perfect. Welcome in. Yeah. Voices Jupiter in Pokemon Evolutions. Laura Tiber, Laura Tiber in Attack on Titan, the final season, May May in Sword Art Online, Alicization, yes, said it right, <laughs> Juno in Fire Emblem Heroes, and Eula in Genshin Impact. <laughs> also, also Genshin Impact. I love that. I mean, is there anyone in the industry that's not on Genshin Impact? I mean, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> Like literally so many people are doing voices on that. And I just love to see it. Yeah, there's um, so many you characters. are wonderful, Susie. And of course you voice the spunky, quirky, fantastic Yuffie in mm. Final Fantasy VII Remake Intermission. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which I personally loop into Final Fantasy VII Remake because it's, it's together. It's part of it, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> so we are so happy to have you here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Um, so today we're going to talk about Final Fantasy VII Remake, of course. We're going to talk a little bit about it, but of course, I want to get to know you all and I want to share your wonderful wonderful selves with SRG. Um, so the first question we're going to talk about, your Final Fantasy VII Remake characters, how are you alike? What do you, what do you share with these characters? Um, I guess... Personally, for me, uh, I guess I'm most similar to Yuffie in that she's um, really like mischievous and sassy. Uh, well, for me, especially for um, people that I'm more comfortable around, um, I like to think that I'm uh, kind of like spunky and have like that peppy energy that she has. Um, and she's also a little bit dumb and naive, <laughs> which I can be a little bit sometimes. <laughs> I love that. I definitely get a sweetness from you that I don't get from Yuffie necessarily. <laughs> so I also, a brat. <laughs> I also, yeah, she is a little bit, but I don't get that vibe from you. So that's, that's great. <laughs> uh, wait until you get to know me. <laughs> oh, okay. That's the difference. Got it. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Max, how about you? 
Uh, I feel like uh, Red 13 is like a classic introvert kind of kind of kind of guy. And uh, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, uh, he um, I feel like he's got social anxiety. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> so I think that's um, fair. yeah, that's probably how I'm most alike uh, to Red 13. All right. And then, of course, um, how are you different? And you don't have to go with the obvious one in that, like, you're a human if you want. <laughs> Well, Red 13 is basically a human. I mean, <laughs> um, but uh, how am I different? Um, he has a strong like dislike of of humans, I feel like. Uh, and I, I don't or like a dis not a dislike, but like a distrust. Mm. Uh, and I'm probably the opposite where I'm too trusting mm. um, or, or, you know, if he's like dis distrusting at first and then maybe he trusts later on I i'm the opposite i like a completely trusting don't know who you are i just like you immediately and then later on i can find out if you're a crappy person i guess <laughs> i think that's beautiful that's a great way to live though yeah yeah i think i mean i feel like i'm the opposite and i wish i wish i was more trusting right off the bat i really do i think that's a great quality Susie, what do you think how are you different from yuffie i already mentioned what i thought <laughs> I think you're just too sweet. Oh, uh, thanks. <laughs> but once you get to know me, it's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Um, no, I think she's she's quite loud <laughs> and she uh, acts with a lot of bravado, which I, I tend to be a lot more on the quieter side, especially if I don't really know somebody, not really familiar with them. Um, and I tend to not really like to be in the spotlight too much. Um, but she's uh, definitely like, I'm the main character. Um, and uh, I also don't get motion sickness. So that's not a thing for me. <laughs> oh, that's a big difference. Yeah, that's a big difference. <laughs> Lucky for you. Yeah. I know some people that get motion sick all the time and I just can't imagine such horror. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm good with that. <laughs> so for both of you, um, this journey has been a long one and the game has been out at least final fantasy seven remake has been out for two full years. Final fantasy seven remake intermission has been out for a year and almost like a year and nine months, something like that. Yeah. I think in June, no, June now. 11th, June 11th is going to be the day it was released since last year. Wait, since last year. So it's not yeah. even been a year. No. Yeah. 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 You're right. Oh my gosh. Time <laughs> doesn't mean anything anymore. Does it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, anyways. Um, but the question is like, how's the journey been? It's, it's, there's been some time since the release, we've had time to get some amazing love for the game, for these characters, um, in that time frame, And, uh, the world, it seems like it's changed. You know, these games came out at a time when people were not at work, not at school. We were just all kind of home, figuring yes. out how to live life differently for the first time. Um, but now things are different. So it's been kind of a journey. I just, I hope that you can speak to that a little bit. Uh, well, I guess for me, um, I, I knew of Final Fantasy VII Remake because uh, my roommate started playing it um, during COVID when it was released. And they're like, oh my God, this is the one hope that I have in my life right now. <laughs> Uh, it's such a good game. Um, and I just remember being so mesmerized by it because it was so beautiful and um, the characters were wonderful and uh, it looked really fun. So I was like, wow, like maybe one day, like I hope I can be like a background character in this game, like maybe a cat. Like I'd be so happy to just even like be a part of this universe. Um, Did you say you would be happy even voicing a cat in yeah, the game? Yeah, I would have. Yeah, because I literally it was not... It was not even in my field of perception that mm -hmm. I would even be in this game, mm -hmm. let, let alone because um, I only started professionally voice acting uh, in 2020, in June 2020. So Crazy. I was just like, I was like, I didn't even know if I wanted to be a voice actor at that time. I really didn't. Um, it was kind of a gamble for me. And uh, it wasn't until I heard the news about Yuffie that I was like, okay, maybe, maybe I will stay here. Cause honestly, before that time, I, I don't even know if I would be here <laughs> if it was. Susie, what that. did you do before you were voice acting? Uh, I was uh, working at an office job. I was honestly uh, working nine to five at um, an education uh, exchange company. 
Um, and I was working for that for a few years and I just, something just didn't feel right. I was like, this is it, huh? Like, uh, I don't know. I, I don't really, uh, enjoy my life right now. Mm. <laughs> um, it did teach me a lot and, uh, you know, not to say that I had a bad life or anything, but I was just like, just something feels not right with me. <laughs> so, um, uh, it's amazing know, that you yeah. listen to that voice though. Yeah. Well, it, it was really weird timing. First of all, <laughs> it was like a chain of events where uh, my company had merged. And so uh, they started letting go of entire departments, um, including mm-hmm. mine. And well, at that point I was already kind of like, well, maybe I should just move on. Um, but I needed uh, like a kick in the butt to do that essentially. And that was, and, um, at the same time, um, my friend was like, oh, hey, like we're, we're holding auditions for, you know, this show. Like you seemed like you were interested in this kind of thing. Would you be, you know, willing to just try out? I was like, oh yeah, that'd be, that'd be really cool. So, um, I auditioned for that, got the lead part (laughs) and then I had to like fly back and forth, um, to like Texas to record, uh, like during my vacation times and sick times. Um, and then after like, I was like fully let go, I was like, well, I could either find another full-time job and just stay here, or I could just drop everything and, and try voice acting. <laughs> Cause like you only live once and I will never have an opportunity like this again. So, yes. um, <laughs> wow. So that is so inspiring. Yeah. So it was definitely a uh, timing, a lot of timing and, uh, really weird circumstances that led me here. So wow. the SRG con chat, by the way, is blown away by that story <laughs> because they're like, you're a natural, like you're so talented. You're so oh, good. You, you would never know that you had just started. <laughs> I was honestly so nervous recording Yuffie because it was, she was one of my first like actual, you know, video game roles. And, um, I, I was struggling so hard. <laughs> But um, Kirk, the director, really helped me out through that. And I'm super grateful um, for his guidance um, through all of that. So yeah, I relate to that a know. lot. I relate yeah. to that a lot. It's yeah. Really hard. How was it for you? <laughs> it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my whole life. Really? Yeah. Oh, I mean, between the three of us, Max, you came into it being an expert already, like with lots of experience. Was it even difficult for you because of just how precise it is? Came into to this game, you mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, was it difficult? Well, uh, I, I think every character, every new character is a challenge. Um, but uh, as far as like, um, um, was it difficult? No, I, I'll say it like I was involved in Final Fantasy 15. Mm. Um, Kingsglaive, right? And Kingsglaive, yeah. Well, so yes, Kingsglaive most uh, uh, predominantly. Um, and I, it's nice, I'll say like, it's nice to be able to take on a more um, substantial role in the Final Fantasy universe. Uh, Cause two of my uh, best buddies uh, are Ray and Robbie who play the main characters of Final Fantasy 15. And it was a lot of like uh, watching, uh, I don't know, just like traveling with them and people like, fanboying and fangirling over them and and uh and me being like i was in kingsglaive uh, <laughs> as a character who I, I don't even think his name was said in the movie a single time he's credited um, on imdb he is i made sure of that, uh, <laughs> I love that. Uh, but um yeah but um so it's just uh it's cool uh, it's always always a challenge especially this character and this voice is kind of a new voice i kind of um um came up with this uh his voice um i haven't really used that for any other character so that's kind of a cool thing mm-hmm. and uh and yeah yeah so it's not not difficult per se but um challenging and uh i i love it i love it a lot i love this character and i love working on it yeah so i guess the benefit that you had coming into it was i mean years of practice because how long have you been voice acting since 2012 professionally okay so you had a lot of experience going into it whereas i know i had zero approximately yeah Yeah. 
<laughs> that's tough. I was just talking um, with someone about how um, it's interesting. Like, um, I love that Square takes chances sometimes yeah. on newer oh names gosh, yeah. that they're you know that don't really have the pedigree as. You know, uh, oftentimes I feel like there's companies who are like, we just want established people because we can trust that they'll mm -hmm. get the job done. But um, clearly Square makes the right decisions when choosing, <laughs> you know, these newer names. Like, I don't know what, what their vision is, how they I do it. I don't either. But, like, <laughs> but, but it's it's it always comes out so well. Uh, and, uh, you know, you guys are case in point right there. So thank you. Um, yeah. But again, you I leaned on the team man. a lot. <laughs> because they had no business asking me to get in there honestly truly <laughs> yeah but that's what i mean is like they saw they saw something and uh, they were right in the end you know so i can only hope so cuz i hope to keep working <laughs> <I think so. laughs> yeah um it has been a wild journey i have to say i mean the final fantasy community is so special mm -hmm. i mean I, I, I am just, none of my other roles in the acting world have, 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 the, has the fan base really just kind of like brought you in and welcomed you and just so warmly. Like, I feel like the Final Fantasy community is so special in that way. And having played Final Fantasy games, I get it. I like, I am a Final Fantasy fan. So I know why it really just has that kind of like very warm and welcoming like culture. Um, I don't know what, what has y'all's been experienced with that? Um, pretty much the same. Like I have been a fan of Final Fantasy since the start. Uh, my favorite one is Final Fantasy X. Um, so I've always been in love with the universe and, um, I was a fan myself. So of course, like I understood how big of a deal this was. And especially, um, for seven where, you know, there was spinoffs and there was Advent children and, um, just being able to be a even a small part of this legacy is just such an honor and I you know I'm so grateful to all the fans who've been like so supportive and welcoming and um you know that they like the performances and everything so yeah super super happy about that <laughs> yeah uh the fans are always great I mean the it's it's such a uh um a welcoming community i feel like final fantasy fans are some of the like warmest like mm -hmm. um you know uh people that i encounter i go to a lot of conventions and um there are, i've never come across anyone who's who's been you know any shade of mean uh mm -hmm. it's always been you know very complimentary and and people have been super cool about it from day one too like i remember <laughs> i remember the trailer dropping um for uh her the first day my voice was in a trailer or something and i remember people going um it's perfect it's perfect it's exactly <laughs> what i wanted and i was just that was really that made me very happy yeah <laughs> that's wild to think about there's really like no better compliment right than to hear someone say that's exactly how i heard mm -hmm. it in my head yeah. you're doing yeah. it just like that yeah, especially yeah, from the OG fans, they're like, oh my gosh, like you sound just like, you know, how I pictured those pixels talking <laughs> that way, way back then. And it's like, I know Whoa. those like three or four pixels that <laughs> the original game had from these characters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So we've talked about Final Fantasy, but I want to hear now as well what your favorite role has been besides these ones. Favorite role of mine, yeah, is <laughs> I have a few. It's hard to pick, I'm sure. I have a few for different reasons, and none of them are what anybody would expect me to say. Well, then we definitely want to hear them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my very first job ever, my very first animation yeah. job, SAG job, was um, to replace an actor. Um, or fill in for an actor, I should say, named Daryl Sabara on a show called um, Ultimate Spider-Man. And I played the Rhino slash Alex O'Hearn. And he, Daryl was off shooting something in Siberia or some other land. Fancy. And uh, the director asked me to come in and um, do some ADR for that character while he was gone. And uh, that's special to me because it was my very first job and it meant a lot. And I, I it's so funny because like 
I remember when I was first starting out, I, I, I would say like, I would hear people who have been doing voiceover for years and years and years, like Rob Paulson. And, and I would hear him say sometimes like, I don't remember what happened on that job. And when I was first starting out, I remembered every single detail about every session. You know, my first like 10 sessions, I can tell you exactly what happened in so much detail. And then after that, it's all a blur. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, that job was like super special. So that's one of my favorite jobs. Um, I lost my voice because I was didn't know how to use my voice at the time. So oh, I just, no. I was just screaming and I just like went all out and like five lines in, I lost my voice. And I was like, keep going. Oh, no. oh that's um, horrible. And uh, so, yeah, so there's that. But my favorite character, I would say, is Bobo from Elena of Avalor. Uh, and Bobo is this little monkey who <laughs> sounds like this and he sings. He has a whole song about being the top banana. And that's, that's so cute. One of my favorite things I've ever done. I got to work with um, um, some Emmy Award winners and, and really cool people. Um, so that it, it's awesome. And I get to work with some of those same people on a show that I do now called uh, Alice's Wonderland Bakery, where I play the Cheshire Cat. And that's another favorite mm. of mine. Um, that's a really cool role, I bet. It's super cool. I mean, it's an iconic character. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's great. I play a lot of characters with, with paws, to be honest. Huh. Um, yeah. Hmm. Um, got Red 13. Hey. Got Cheshire <laughs> Cat. We got uh, Atsushi from Bungo Stray Dogs. There's Plague from Miraculous Ladybug. Um, there's monkeys, monkeys have paws. So Bobo. Of yeah. Course. Uh huh. Um, yeah. Lots of paws. Wow, what a trend. Paws? Did you realize that before today? <laughs> um, I I had thought about this before, but I'm realizing that I think there's even more characters than I'm, <laughs> than I realized. Yeah. <laughs> What about you, Susie? Sorry, I just kept wondering, do monkeys have paws or hands? Well, the, they, there's the monkey <laughs> paw, the story of the monkey paw. Really? Because the, like, there's... when I think of, or am I thinking of chimpanzees? I'm thinking of chimpanzees have hands. <laughs> Mon monkeys have paws because there is that famous story. I believe it's called the monkey Google paw this. or the monkey's paw. And it's by, um, yes. it's a horror story. And it's the one, isn't it, where they have wishes and the wishes go wrong? Or... Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Google it's a whole says... concept. The concept of the monkey's paw. Yeah. You get what you want, but it has this horrible twist. Oh. Yes. Yeah. But, but that's just a concept. I mean, technically, if we're wondering, this is a slight tangent, but technically, if you think about it, they do have thumbs. So, so... they have hands. Google think, says they have I hands. think the thumbs make the I hands... Think... They probably, they have hands. It's hands, but like back in the day, they were probably like, it's a paw. Cause they didn't, they didn't. Maybe, <laughs> maybe it know. counts as both because like, if they're an animal, don't they have a paw? Although some animals have well, hooves. Well, we're it's animals true. too. We're asking the tough questions here. That's the important <laughs> thing. What, comp what makes a paw versus a hand? Well, I think a paw has the pads. Right. Yeah. And then usually has like a little thumb on the wrist. Right. OK, so let me ask you a question. Thumb. So if you have a thumb on the wrist, no, if you have a if you have the pads, you if I just had pad, if I had a hand like this, uh -huh. but then I had the pads, would I be would it be a hand or a paw? If you paw. had a hand with pads on it, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be a hand paw hybrid. Hand -paw and we'd hybrid. have to okay. call it such. And paw. Yeah. And paw. OK, okay. We, we made we made a new thing today. And paw. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one thing we can glean from this panel cool, yeah it's cool, it's cool, all educational cool. here <laughs> it's the nature today. nature panel actually nice <laughs> nice all right Susie um, favorite role oh yeah um kind of like Max like the first role that I ever did um it was my first anime first professional credit ever um it was a kimono friends um I played three characters um Kaban, Lucky Beast, and Mirai. One of them is the main character, and one of them is a little robot. Um, and so that was kind of like the whole thing that started my idea of maybe becoming a voice actor. Um, so it was funny because, like, as I said, uh, my friend, my longtime friend, um, had invited me to just, you know, throw in my hat for an audition because they were like looking for a bunch of voices. Um, so uh, after I was cast, um, it just, the environment was so welcoming because it was among people that I felt like I've met before. I was like kind of friends with them before. 
Um, so it felt very uh, familial. Mm -hmm. um, and it was very nice because uh, for my first role, um, they were very understanding, um, you know, kind of guided me through it. Um, and it, so it, it didn't feel like too nerve wracking um, just because uh, I was in good company. Um, and yeah, so that was one of my favorite roles. Um, another one would be pumpkin pie cookie from Cookie Run Kingdom. <laughs> Um, and it was just really fun because, uh, I don't know, I don't often get to do those like really high cutesy voices. Um, but what? she's like, yeah, yeah. I, you don't often get to do high cutesy voices. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, but I, I do, I do, but not like that kind of whispery, like mm. creepy tone. Um, oh, is it creepy? She, she's a Halloween cookie. Yeah, oh, okay. all the new base cookies. So she's like, "Do you want to see my dresses?" Like, you know. Oh, that's very creepy. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm like, the answer is no. I don't want to see your dresses. No, thank you. And you say yeah. it like that. <laughs> so yeah, that's very cute and fun. And of course, uh, Eula is is also mm. very fun as well. Because um, she's she's quite different from Yuffie and Pumpkin Pie Cookie, uh, being very serious. <laughs> I love that. It feels like for both of you, the attachment to your very first role is super special. Mm -hmm. well, which, that's the thing that started it all, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I can relate to that completely. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us more. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I never, again, had no business being cast as this role being my first voiceover role ever, but truly incredibly special. How could it not be though? You know, of course, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think everybody in this game, their voice just fits super perfectly, and Square is amazing <laughs> for doing Brianna, all this. Brianna, did you have a favorite uh, Final Fantasy before this? I have played Final Fantasy fourteen and fifteen before remake was even on my radar at all, mm. and um, I've um, I've got a slight obsession with Final Fantasy fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I counted or I checked my hours in that game and it's like somewhere above 2000. So it's like, mm. I'm kind of, oh. kind of obsessed with it. It's up there. That's bit. up there. That's mm. up there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so right now I think that officially counts as my favorite just based on pure game time hours. Mm. Um, mm. But I did love 15 and I watched King's Glaive and I very much enjoyed it. Oh, nice. 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 Yeah. I was, then, I was obsessed as a kid with Final Fantasy VIII, changed my oh, life. Oh, really? No, no oh, voice, shoot. no voiceover, mm. um, like seven, but it had mm. these CGI cutscenes that were blowing mm. my mind. And uh, I, um, it had like such a big impact on me. Mm. And uh, I haven't played it since then. I wonder what I would think of it now. Yeah, but, would you um, go back and play it? I don't know. I played with, um, I think before Final Fantasy 15 came out, but it was about to come out, I with Ray, uh, who plays Noctis, I played through, what did I play through? Nine? Mm -hmm. And was there another one? No, well, on my own, I played 12. Okay. Which is okay. lightning? Wait, is it like 13? No, no, no. no. No, Thir 11. 13 10. is lightning. 10, 13. <laughs> 13 <is laughs> There's lightning. so many. <laughs> that one I played. 13 is I played lightning. 13. I always wanted to play 10 <gasps> because I, I you always haven't never played it. Max. Never played it. <sighs> Max, this needs to happen. It, it needs to happen. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you gonna feel you. so strongly about it. <laughs> wait, do. did I play? Wait, 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 wait. Did I play it? Wait, wait a second. <laughs> Hang on. No. <laughs> No, maybe I played a little bit, uh, cause, cause that's the one with um John Maggio, right? Yes. <laughs> and James Arm <laughs> and well, cause I yes. remember yeah, what's yeah, his yeah. name? What's his, what's the character's name? Titus. Name? No, but John DiMaggio's character. Oh, Waka. Waka. So I did play some of it, but okay. I, I must not have finished it. I think, yeah. Gotcha. Um, because I remember there being like the Waka ball or, or there oh yeah, 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 the yeah. Blitz ball, yeah. Blitz ball. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> you can tell I'm a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I can't believe you. I mean, you know even better than me. I haven't played it as well. <gasps> oh my gosh, Brianna, I know. I've only played one. the modern Final Fantasies. I just have a I have a real problem with playing old games. 
Honestly, me too, because 10 yeah. was my very first Final Fantasy and I could not go backwards. Like mm. as much hype as seven and eight got, like I could not, I can't play it until they maybe get an upgrade in graphics or remake. Eight got a remaster. I believe. Yeah. Because because seven and eight really were worlds different graphically. Uh-huh. Like yeah. eight had those cutscenes even back mm-hmm. in the day. And seven just it doesn't have the same. It's really, really pixelated. It so there's the a big difference between seven and eight. Scenes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But not the same. <laughs> yeah. Nowhere close. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I I want to, but I really, it's hard for me. It's hard for me to like stay yeah. engaged in an older game. I feel that. I feel mm-hmm. that. I think the only one, I think that's why I, I did have a bit of trouble like getting through nine. I, I mm. enjoyed it, but it was, it was the kind of a thing where I was like, I should have like some CGI cutscenes and stuff. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, you know, um, but uh, um, uh, yeah, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, the nostalgia of eight, mm. I think would allow me to play through again. Yes. I think yeah, that been. really helps. Cause I could go, I could go through and play Ocarina of Time again, even though that's an old game, mm-hmm. I, I have the nostalgia for it. So I'm not, yeah. it's interesting when you replay a game that you played way back in the day, when it first released, you're not seeing it through the modern lens. You're seeing it the same. You're almost going yes. back in time. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, and also seeing how so you many- saw it. There's so many other things that add to it, like the, the music component where, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, like I, I listen to the music of certain yeah. games that I played or, or I haven't even played uh, now just on its own, just because I enjoy the, the masterful, oh, A, yeah. either it's like masterfully composed or B, it just has so much nostalgia. <laughs> like I'll listen to like MIDI, you know, 8-bit, 16-bit music um, back in the day uh, just because it's fun and nostalgic. Same. Yeah, agree. Yeah. So, who's your favorite character in eight? Then, Zell. Ah, uh, okay. I can see it. <laughs> uh, Zell is for those who don't know. Zell is a uh, uh, an emo bad boy. <laughs> he's uh, he's um, he's kind of like punk. No, he's he's punk. Uh, he's the punk bad boy, and he's this blonde character, and he punches a lot. He's got these brass knuckles that were always super cool. Uh, That's so that. Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy just has it, just has them locked in with that kind of character. Yeah, yeah, it's it's perfect. It's my type of character. And uh, if they do make a remake, I would love to throw my hat in the ring for that <laughs> Or Squall. Squall works too. An iconic character for sure. Definitely. Mm-hmm. So I do want to remind the chat right now that I am watching the chat. If you have any questions for Susie or Max, please do drop them in and I'll be sure to collect some to be asking. Um, but first I have a question for both of you that um, is close to my heart. So we're called the strange rebel gaming community because we believe in being rebels in a good sort of way. Like we don't want to be rebellious just to make trouble, but sometimes the status quo isn't all it's cracked up to be. And you can go against the grain to make the world just a little bit brighter. And uh, so what's one way that you go against the status quo in your life? What makes you a rebel? I I feel like for me, um, I had actually very, I didn't say anything, but I had a very similar uh, story to Susie where I was doing something that I really disliked Mm -hmm. and then switched to something, took a big risk, um, which was act, which was voice acting. And, uh, uh, and it paid off. I I was a pre-med student for four years. Were Um, you really? I was. Yeah. And I, uh, very much disliked it, but was trying to convince myself that I liked it. Mm -hmm. Like did anything I could to convince myself that this Mm -hmm. was the right path for me. And it wasn't, I, what I really wanted to do was what I was doing kind of like in secret the whole time, which is like <laughs> taking acting classes. And like, I was an acting minor. And mm-hmm. yet I, I was like, but, but maybe I can do that. Like after becoming a doctor or something, or like mm-hmm. at the same time, like Ken Jong. Ken Jong is a doctor <laughs> slash actor. So um, really what Ken Jong started as a, he was a doctor and then just really acting. Yeah. I yeah. had no idea. 
<laughs> yeah. And early on in his career, I don't know if it's now necessarily, but early on in his, in his career, he was like the doctor on set sometimes. Um, How funny. Was, yeah. While he was doing, you know, acting in the same production. Sometimes but, your calling just keeps calling and keeps calling, keeps calling and keeps calling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe someday I'll play a doctor, but um, <laughs> I, so I would say like, for me, being a rebel means like following your heart and your passion and not necessarily um, listening to the thing that you should be doing or, um, you know, um, having any sort of outside pressures telling you what you should be doing and following your heart and your instinct. And it sounds cheesy, but um, that's kind of what I live by now. So I love that. I think that is so important. And I think that so much of what we experience in our days is related to our career, is related to what we do and what we produce and making the change that, making sure that you do something that you are passionate about has such a huge effect on your life. Yeah. Truly. On your, enti- on your entire life. Yeah. On your entire life. Yeah. 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 I mean, Max put it perfectly. That's pretty much, you know, I'm on the exact same page um, as you in terms of, following your gut instinct, um, just feeling that something's not quite there. Um, and, you know, just taking that chance. Um, and I know for a long time, I was, I was very scared, um, to take that step. Um, even now, because it's still early on for me, I, I have doubts. Um, but you know, the, the big thing is, is believing that this is the path that, that you want to do. And that you want to stick with it, and so that this is this is your option. Um, so yeah, <laughs> Max said everything that I wanted to say um, perfectly. <laughs> you know what is so funny though? I asked the same question to Britt Barron and Erica Lindbeck at the last SRG Con, and they said the same thing: mm-hmm. that being in this career is rebellious making the choice to say no thank you to job security, Mm -hmm. to say no thank you to what is prescribed and do something that isn't guaranteed. That is, that's hugely terrifying, but it's so, so, so rewarding. It's very rewarding. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to start my own practice. I was going (laughs) to, you had plans. I I had, (laughs) I had, I had interned at research facilities and doctor's wow. offices. And I was like, I can see exactly how this plays out. <laughs> and then uh, my, uh, my house of cards, as I started failing classes, started tumbling down. And I was like, <laughs> okay, I can't see how this would play out anymore. So uh, yeah. Would follow, you follow your go back if you, if you knew you were like, okay, I'll never book another acting job again. Would you go back to being a doctor? No, God, no. Oh, God, no. <laughs> really? Oh, no. Oh, I hated it. I hated it. <laughs> it was terrible. I it was the worst. At, like, listen, no, no shade to anybody who's in that profession. Sure. If you love it, that's absolutely what you should be doing. But mm-hmm. I did not have a passion for it. I was, I was really. You could you could make the analogy to any other job that you dis you dislike or you think you would like hate. Like that's how I was about being a doctor, and I just what I, he, the the truth is, I thought that in order to be happy you needed to make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And no matter how many people were like, money doesn't equal happpiness. I was like, clearly you're wrong. <laughs> I, what I'm seeing is <laughs> like, what you know, um, so, I, so that's what I thought. And that was the philosophy that guided me through mm-hmm. that portion of my life until I was forced to break that philosophy and mm-hmm. that way of thinking. And, um, and, and I think it was also necessary that I was forced mm-hmm. to, to, to go that route for like three and a half years before changing over because it gave me the assurance that I needed that like that wasn't the thing I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. I put all that, that energy, that pent up like, you know, like frustration. I threw all that energy into uh, voiceover as a career and it gave me like a great work, work, ge- work ethic. So mm-hmm. um Failing is I, another way of putting it is like, uh, I think that like, it's great to fail. Like, and you to took fail. a lesson from it. I, I did. And if you fail big and you fail often, and especially when you're young, like you learn so much 
and it just makes you a more well-rounded person. I'm babbling, but yeah. It's so true. I wonder if every actor has had moments where they've tried something else and just been like, this is not, this is not it for me. I, I tried lawyering. I interned for a lawyer one summer. I thought maybe, maybe this is it for me. I did mock Mm. trial in school and then all the paperwork that lawyers have to lug around. I mean, not just like do paperwork, but they have to like carry big boxes on rolling carts because that's how heavy it all is. Horrible experience. And I was like, great. Well, I know I don't want to do this. (laughs) I don't even want to do this for another summer, let alone the rest of my life. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And it's stuff like that, that teach. I had to pull apart. This is, this is gross, but I had to pull uh, under a microscope pull apart um maggots basically uh, and and dissect and dissect like the eye discs and the brain discs no which way were mi- which were like microscopic and then you'd put them on a slide and um mm. the it's ca- kind of cool like if you get past the gross part this part is kind of cool okay hang on i'm, so, I'm super uh, into it i'm not <laughs> squeamish though so sorry srg if you are you put it on a slide and uh, it's this genealogy study to where they would like uh, breed the Drosophila, which are the fruit flies, uh, uh, with um, uh, proteins that would glow when, when you put it under like a UV light or whatever. So you put this in this 3D uh, electron microscope that would slice the already microscopic brain disc and eye disc into 300 different 3D mm. slices. And then you could see it colored because because the DNA was like, was it, it was bred with this i don't know how it works it was bred with this color um you know glowing proteins anyway very cool the one thing that came out of that was um i have no proof that i was ever a doctor or in the scientific um <laughs> field but um a couple years ago i was reached out by the lead researcher of that team and he said um hey are you the max middleman from uh 14 15 years ago and i went um yes and he was like we are finally publishing this research and your name will be wow. in the published scientific journal <laughs> and i was like no yeah, that's way so cool. that's so wow. cool i did it so if you say i mean there's a million names in there but if you search uh max middleman Drosophila, what well, let me see um uh yeah i'm in PubMed. it's this is this this that's wild it's great it's great. <laughs> that is so cool. I mean, I'm pretty sure like that's a really cool fun fact. Like if if you ever for the rest of your life get asked, what's a fun fact about you? Fact. <laughs> you have an awesome one. Yeah. I have yeah. a published scientific article. <laughs> yeah. Dang. Oh Dang. yeah. So technically I am a scientific researcher in addition to being a voice actor. Very cool. That's that's quite an introduction. When I asked you, should I introduce you a certain way? You should have said <laughs> Dr. Middleman. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Middleman. Now I know. Now I know. Actually. Oh man, that's amazing. What would you have done, Susie? Me? Yeah, Outside did you know? Of- like it wasn't voice acting, but did you have a plan? Uh honestly, no. I mean, like like a lot of people, um, it was just based on what my parents wanted me to do. Um, and, uh, you know, I thought it's, it's an office job. I'm just going to get promoted and, uh, I don't know, get more money and, uh, get an apartment or whatever. (laughs) So, I mean, I did get promoted, but it was just like, I wasn't really settled into the whole corporate environments. Um, it just, it just felt very restrictive and I didn't like to dress up all the time. I hated wearing office clothes. (laughs) So, um, but yeah, like I didn't really try too many other things outside that because I've just been doing it for such a, a while, like after graduating. Um, so I went straight into voice over after that. What'd you major in? Um, sociology, but it oh. didn't, it didn't relate to anything because I went into, um, it was like education admissions, mm-hmm. um, counseling, um, So it was like helping um, international students come to the U.S. um, to study at universities. Um, Well, that's pretty interesting. And I can imagine it being very rewarding. But if it's not for you, it's not for you, right? It was rewarding. And like uh, Max mentioned, um, 
like that kind of your your background outside of voice acting can really help you in other aspects of your life um like because of my experience there i'm i would say i'm pretty organized um i know how to communicate uh, be professional and all of those skills all of those soft skills have helped me a lot um in terms of not only having the ability to navigate like the the business aspect of voiceover, but also just um, um, professionally and God, what was, what was I gonna say? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, the business side of the acting world is something that I don't think a lot of people think about ever. I mean, we're, we're independent contractors, like we're our own businesses. It's completely self-driven. And then we have to like, yeah, we get to do the fun voices and all that when we're in the booth, but there's a lot that goes into it behind the scenes too. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say mentality. Like that is a, Mm. that is a big thing to even go into voiceover or acting in general is to have that, um, strong mentality, um, to not let that, uh, affect you so much, like getting rejected or, um, you know, facing certain situations. I I think those experiences have helped me a lot in sort of tempering my expectations in this field. (laughs) Definitely important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause we audition for 5 million things and we hear back about one and it's like, yes, -hmm. I got the one though. That's what counts. (laughs) Um, okay. So I have a question from the audience, if that's okay. Uh, which character that you've voiced do you relate to the most? Like which character that you've played? Do you like, are you like, yeah, that, that character is me. Uh, (laughs) Ryuji from Persona 5 and Ito from Genshin Impact are both goofballs. And so in that way, I would say I relate to them because they're both doofuses and (laughs) I'm a doofus. And that's why I relate to them. <laughs> <laughs> but they're not like published scientific researchers. That's true. No, no. I mean, they would never. Why, no, they would never. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I, I love, I love a goofy side. We love to be goofs here. <laughs> what do you think, Susie? Um, probably Kaban from Kimono Friends. Uh, she's very shy and quiet and um she she just tries her best (laughs) like honestly uh she doesn't she doesn't like to have too much attention onto herself Mm -hmm. uh but she likes to uh, support the others around her um so i would say yeah maybe like that and also a side of yuffie as well just being very like sassy and bratty sometimes especially to the people she knows (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, that's part of the spice of life is being sassy, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> sassy and goofy and, and anything, anything that makes you laugh. I love that. <laughs> um, one more question from SRG. Um, earlier, you mentioned Max um, coming up with the voice for Red 13 is a little bit different for you. And you don't really have any other characters that have that voice. How did you develop that? How did you come to that? Did it take practice? Were you trying a few different things? Um, I tried, I remember sending them a couple different takes, um, for the voice, both of which, uh, were, I hadn't really used before. Um, and, uh, Mm. we kind of settled into it during the session, but yeah, I, I, it's not like I was, um, before the, uh, most of the time when I come up with a, a new voice, um, it's not sort of like out in the wild in life it is like during the audition um mm-hmm. because i'm so informed by the picture of the character mm-hmm. or the description um and so the voice is figured out like you know in a couple minutes during the audition um oftentimes too like a, it'll start one at, in one place and then say the audition is like whatever you're reading through it it'll start here it'll kind of transform and you're like oh now that you've read through the context and you've gotten a chance to like um use that voice um it kind of morphs into like or it settles into what it be you know ultimately becomes towards the end and so then i'll do like for the audition for instance i'll do a whole pass through again once i've gotten to the end 
Um, and then, yeah. So, yeah. I, was, I hadn't rehearsed it in advance. It just came out of me. <laughs> you say that like an expert, though. You say that like a natural. But to translate, <laughs> it comes out gradually by trying different things, experimenting with different things. Because I don't think that's something that non-actors can really um, have ever really done. Like non-actors, it's like it's like magic. It's like trying to explain how magic happens. Yeah. Like it, it, it. You read it a few different times in a few different ways, and also like voices, they have different registers sometimes for different emotional things mm -hmm. too. So based on <clears throat> if you're lucky, you get an audition where a character has a few different emotional states in the different lines that you're reading. And so I think that's kind of what you were, is that what you were referencing when you mean like you give the whole audition a pass and then you go through and give it another pass as yes, the voice is settled each, in? Yes, because each line has a different intent. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you could start with a voice and realize, oh, I never played, you know, um, the incredulity from this line in that voice. And then it comes out a little differently. And you're like, well, well, what if I, tr you know, put the voice more in this region over here in my vocal, you know, range. And then uh, you're able to both include the anger from before and the incredulity from that line. And then you've got a line where you're really happy and you're like, well, okay, what if I shift it over here? And then that's the, it's hard to explain. <laughs> it is hard to explain because it's all completely internal and it's only audio. Yeah. <laughs> Like if, if you're acting, I can, I can very easily tell you, like, if I want to be like really happy, I just, you know, smile a little bit, but a lot of people don't think about how to translate those feelings directly through your throat. Right. Well, the one thing, the one thing I will, I will not let happen is I won't let the voice hinder the performance. So mm -hmm. I, I think that's maybe another way of looking at it. Like if the, you know, if you're reading it, in a certain voice and you realize you get to something where there's a, you have to express yourself in a certain way. And you're like, well, this voice isn't allowing me to, to express mm -hmm. it in that way. You have to, you, you're forced to change the voice. And, um, uh, yeah, yeah. So that's, to, that's uh, such an important point. Yeah. It really is. Cause I know a lot of people also have this idea of voice acting is just just doing silly voices. No, but I won't <laughs> sacrifice performance for- mm -hmm. To your point, it's all about acting. The core of it yeah. comes down to, can you express what this character feels yeah. through your body? So important. Yeah. I think <laughs> we are nearing the end of our time together. That Unfortunately, <laughs> it yeah. flew by. Time just, really flew yeah. by. We just yeah. chatted. <laughs> And that was the point. Mm -hmm. I just wanted all of the people of the world to get to know both of you a little bit better because I think you're wonderful and I hope they all think you're wonderful too. I'm sure they Thank do. You. Thank you. Brianna, you're wonderful. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. Um, before no, we go. you're wonderful. No, hey, you. Uh, you're you. breathtaking. <laughs> <laughs> um, before we go, I want people to find you. How, if they would like to support you, if they want to follow you, where can they find you? Susie? Uh, well, I have a Twitter. Just go directly to my name, Susie Young. Um, also Instagram, Susie.Young. Um, and I also have a Twitch channel, which I don't stream as often as I should or want to. You um, stream plenty often, girl. <laughs> For as busy as you are, you stream plenty. Yeah, but it's at uh, Y-E-S-U-Z-I-E. -E. Yes, Susie. Interested. Yes, Susie. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Max? Uh, it's Max Middleman for all the socials and for Twitch. I stream every Wednesday with my wow. idiot friends, Ray and Robbie, <laughs> and we uh, do idiot things together. So come check us out. We are at Loud Annoying on uh, Twitch, which is short for Loud Annoying and Very Annoying, which is the name of our comedy troupe. So come find us there. Wow. That is as goofy as it gets. I love that. You were right. <laughs> that goofy spirit coming out there. I love it. <laughs> Okay. Thank you both so much for your time. I appreciate you so much. You are wonderful. And uh, you, that's yeah. going to be it for this panel, SRG Con. Make sure you get up and stretch, hydrate, have a snack, and we'll be back for the next activity soon. And that does bring us to the end of today's video. I am curious whether you sort of watched it from beginning to end.
video style or if you kind of listen to it podcast style because I think it's really great content for that as well. I so, so enjoyed getting to know a little bit more about Max and Susie. They're such good people. It's kind of unfair that all of the Final Fantasy cast, and I shouldn't be surprised anymore because every single time I meet another member of the Final Fantasy VII Remake cast, just, just amazing people. I'm so, so lucky. Anyways, um, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please do like it. Uh, please do share it with all your friends if you enjoyed it as well. And of course, please remember to subscribe to this channel right here, Strange Rebel Gaming, so you don't miss the next video. More awesome stuff coming at you, but who knows? It could be more of what you're used to, gameplays and the like, or it could be something completely different. We're switching it up. It's 2022. We've got let's try new things energy. All right. I love you all. Bye.